In the next homework, we're going to implement some pretty cool image blurring techniques. And you now know enough that you could go and implement that program on a massively parallel GPU, and you'd get a correct answer. And it would be pretty fast. But we can do better. Now we have all the ingredients to start talking about writing efficient parallel programs in CUDA. For now, I'm only going to talk about high-level strategies. We're going to have a whole unit later on about detailed optimization approaches to help you really squeeze the maximum performance out of the GPU. So think of this as a preview that covers some of the really important high-level things you have to keep in mind when you're writing a GPU program. So the first thing to keep in mind is that GPUs have really incredible computational horsepower. Okay, a high-end GPU can do over 3 trillion math operations per second. You'll sometimes see this written down as T-flops. Okay, a flop stands for a floating point operation per second. So T-flops is teraflops. And modern GPUs can do over 3 trillion of these uh, every second at the high end. But all that power is wasted if the arithmetic units that are doing the math need to spend their time waiting uh, while the system fetches the operands from memory. So the first strategy we need to keep in mind is to maximize arithmetic intensity. Arithmetic intensity is basically the amount of math we do per amount of memory that we access. So we can increase arithmetic intensity by making the numerator bigger or by making the denominator smaller. So this corresponds to maximizing the work we do per thread or minimizing the memory we do per thread. And let's be more exact about what we mean here. Really what we're talking about is maximizing the number of useful compute operations per thread. And really what we care about here is minimizing the time spent on memory per thread. And I phrased this carefully because it's not the total number of memory operations we care about, and it's not the total amount of memory that comes and goes in the course of a thread executing its program. It's how long it takes us to do that. So there are a lot of ways to spend less time on memory accesses, and that's what we're going to talk about now.